Hey guys, welcome back for another week. You know, this uh, month for the series on our Thursdays, we are doing repetition and study rounds on the content that we're covering for the week. This week, if you have not seen the video, we have covered cultural topics, ethics, and legal issues. As I stress to you guys, it's a bunch of terminology. You're going to have to sit down, write it down, and study it. But you know, with this series, I'm trying to give you something that you can hear repetitively, and then you can write it out when you are home and seated and able to do so. But if you're on the go, hopefully this is something you can play to help you study these terms, because really, repetition is what is going to help you retain it. All right, let's get into it. So for you guys who are familiar with me, hey y'all, for you that are new to my channel and following my study resources, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock, family nurse practitioner and founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I do these videos to help you guys easily retain content and material that's needed for nurses and nurse practitioners for board success as well as in practice, okay? So it's not an end-all be-all, but I'm giving you the things and the tools so that you can successfully prepare for your boards. All right, let's get into the material. So as discussed, here are three of the common um, cultural things that I, I really want y'all to make sure you're familiar with. Again, it's not the end all be all. There are many more, but here are three that I want you to make sure that you know. So the Buddhist population, the Asian population, and the Hispanic population. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way into the study style. Um, as far as definition, I should say, not the learning, because that's in the other video. But since we're studying, I'm just going to hit key points and do that repetitively, right? So the Buddhist population, you know, they believe in meditation for their physical and mental wellness. They believe in prayer and chanting and um, vegetarianism, okay? So Buddhists, I want you to think meditation, prayer, chanting, vegetarianism, Okay, so four things. Think of Buddhists, think four things. And again, this is not end all be all, but four things as you're studying. So Buddhists, meditation, prayer, chanting, vegetarianism. Buddhist population, meditation, prayer, chanting, and vegetarianism. Now, the importance of this is because... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, as we are seeing questions and encountering patients, you need to be familiar with cultural practices and beliefs so that you understand how to manage that patient. So I know it might sound kind of vague just to say, okay, they believe in meditation for their physical and mental health, but if they're telling you that they have meditated or looking for recommendations or adding this in, this is why that's significant, Okay. So again, Buddhists think meditation, prayer, chanting, and vegetarianism. Now, the Asian population believe in acupuncture and cupping for their energy and balance. And so I like to say, think A for Asian, A for acupuncture, right? So A for Asian, A for acupuncture, and cupping. A for Asian, A for acupuncture, and cupping. And then our Hispanic population has a strong value in families um, and they do believe in doing rituals to break hexes. So Hispanics, you know, you, and again, this is not the NLB all, and this is not my, uh, my take on things. This is from the textbooks. Okay. So again, Hispanics have high importance on family. So think about family, Hispanics, family, and then rituals to ward off hexes. Okay. Hispanics, high importance on family and then rituals to block hexes. Hispanics, they have a high importance with family, and then rituals to block hexes. All right, let's get into the next area. All right, get your pen and paper out. You need to write this and add it to your flashcard sheets. As I told y'all last week when we were discussing like things and how to study, I always say like, I think it's beneficial with things that are grouped together like this to do flashcard sheets, which is, which is simply a sheet of paper. You write down the questions on the front. So like, what is cultural awareness? Define cultural awareness and have the answer on the back and make a running list as we go through these terms and hang it on places that you go to frequently in your home so that you can quiz yourself throughout the day, even when you're covering other material. So cultural awareness, 
It's the foundation of communication and it involves the ability to stand back from ourselves and becoming aware of our cultural practices, values, beliefs, and perception and those of others, right? So again, cultural awareness is just that, that foundation of communication of stepping back from our own thoughts, but being aware of cultural beliefs, practices, and perceptions of others and ourselves, okay? One more time, cultural awareness is the foundation of communication, and it simply just involves one stepping back for themselves and being aware of different cultural practices, beliefs, and perceptions of others and ourselves. Now, before we get in cultural beliefs, you know when we study these, I'd like you to take a moment to hear me say it three times. You write it three times, but you say it out loud three times. Like I said last week, I do it along with you, but the part of making this um, video pause for you to say it, I want you to just pause it yourself and say it so it's not like making the video just run in silence, okay? So take a moment and... Um, recite cultural awareness three times. Sounds crazy, but there's a method to my madness. All right, so cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs are religion, the culture, the beliefs, the ethic, customs, and any influence, because all of this, their beliefs will influence how patients understand their health concepts and how they choose to take care of their health, right? So that's important to us as providers because we need to be aware and competent on their beliefs and practices to know how to apply that in our um, regimen or what to expect when we're noting things that they're doing or not doing based off their beliefs. So again, cultural beliefs, religion, cultural beliefs and ethics and their customs that will influence their, their um, understanding of health and how they take care of themselves. Cultural beliefs are their customs, their religion, and any of their beliefs and, um, Again, ethnic customs that can impact their understanding of their health as well as how they choose to take care of their health. Now, I want you to write that definition out three times. Take a moment to do that and then take a moment to pause this video and say the definition three times. OK. All right. Cultural competence. Same thing. I want you to write the definition three times listen to me say it three times, and then pause this video so that you can read it to yourself three times. So cultural competence is the ability of providers and organizations to effectively deliver healthcare services that meet the social, cultural, and lingui linguistic needs of patients. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, cultural competence is simply what we know. It's us having that ability as providers and organizations of healthcare facilities to be able to effectively provide care to our patients um, based on their social, cultural, and linguistic needs because of our, that's our competency to be able to do so for, for patients. Again, cultural competence, the ability of providers and organizations to effectively deliver health care services that meet the social, cultural, and linguistic needs of patients. Now you take a moment, pause the video, and say that to yourself three times. All right, got it? All right, let's get to the next part. And again, I know it sounds crazy, but there's a method to my madness. Repetition is that key to help you to learn and retain things. Think about anything that we do repetitively, even if they're bad habits. If you do it repetitively, it becomes a part of your, your daily conditioning, the, the daily things that we do. If we eat poorly, that becomes a part of us, right? If you exercise, repetitively, you see results. If you study repetitively, you see results. So I'm big on doing things in threes. So if you're writing it down three times, that's a form of learning. If you are reading it and saying it to yourself three times, that's a form of learning. That's reading, writing, and then hearing it, auditory learning, three times with me saying this to you. Trust me, it's a method to my madness. Because even when you get stuck, you're like, you know what? I heard Brittany even with her allergies tearing her voice up, saying this over and over and over. Or I remember writing this down and she was saying to do this. So it's different methods of getting this into your, into your mental, right? And so repetition is continuing to, to cycle and condition your brain and strengthen that, that muscle memory. That's all it is to it. 
you're strengthening that muscle, repetitive action, okay? Religious beliefs, so we talked about this. So here, I'm gonna do it the same way that I did like the cultural beliefs with the Buddhist population, the Asian population, and um, the Hispanic population. And before we get on that, since I said it, let's quiz you. Say it um, out loud. What, do you, what are the things that you know about the Buddhist population? Remember, it should be four things, right? So Buddhist population, they believe in what? Meditation, prayer, chanting, and vegetarianism, right? How about the Asian population? Acupuncture and cupping, right? To, for energy and balance. And then the Hispanic population. They hold family in high importance. And they believe in doing rituals to block any hexes, right? Okay. If you didn't get it that time, keep practicing it. You will. And be able to say it with me. As you're driving to clinical or you're driving to work and preparing for these things or you're driving to, to pick the kids up uh, from practice or drop them off or if you're in the kitchen cooking, whatever you're doing, as you continue to play that, that's the point of this study, that you are saying it along. Eventually, you'll start to... It'll start to just come second nature. And then you can apply it to questions because what you're doing here is getting these terms into your mind. And then when I do the weekly practice questions, it's kind of to give you that idea of what the question styles are like. So then when you sit to do questions on your own or when you sit for boards, when you see those questions or when you're in class and you're taking these exams, when you see these questions, you're able to shift and apply what you have now made second nature because you have strengthened your muscle memory in this area. But all right, from the long perspective of that story, religious beliefs, Jehovah's Witness, Christians, Jewish population, right? So Jehovah's Witness, you know, they don't accept any blood products. So three times, Jehovah's Witness, no blood products. Jehovah's Witness, no blood products. Jehovah's Witness, no blood products. All right, Christians, they believe in prayer um, and spiritual healing, right? So Christians believe in prayer and spiritual healing. Christians believe in prayer and spiritual healing. Again, I'm just giving you the short and sweet as you're studying. But if you're really trying to just learn the terms initially, go check out the initial video from a couple of days ago where I really delve into the information. And then this is after you have taken the time to understand it is hearing me repetitively now reviewing it so you can get it into your into that muscle memory. OK, and then the Jewish population, the females believe in cleansing at the menstrual cycle. And then they don't believe in working on Sabbath day, right? So cleansing after the menstrual cycle and no work on Sabbath. So the Jewish population, females cleanse after their menstrual cycle and no work on the Sabbath day. Jewish population, the females cleanse after menstrual cycles and no work on the Sabbath. All right, y'all pause the video. Say that three times to yourself and make sure you're writing these as well. Three times. All right. All right, so next, you know, we're going to get into those ethics and legal terms. These are the ones, so I will just be hitting those really quickly. But, you know, those are these are the, the ones that we commonly see. We're familiar with uh, some of these from nursing undergrad, but just getting them in your mind. And then the nursing code of ethics, the nine uh, code of ethics, that's also a part of this. So you need to be familiar with the, what those are, okay? So the Nursing Code of Ethics, one through nine. Again, on the video previously, I went over the one through nine. I tell you guys that, you know, it's common things that we know as second nature and what we do, but you need to know what it actually is that falls in the nine Nursing Code of Ethics, okay? So I will go over those, get you something to write with, because it's nine of them, all right? And you don't have to write it verbatim, but be familiar with it. All right, ready? All right, so number one, the nurse practices with respect, and dignity toward every individual, right? Nursing code of ethics number one, the nurse practices with respect and dignity toward every individual. One more time, nursing code of ethics number one, the nurse practices with respect and dignity toward every individual. Number two, the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient. Number two, 
the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient. Number two, the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient. Number three, the nurse advocates for the patient. Number three, the nurse advocates for the patient. Number three, the nurse advocates for the patient. Number four, the nurse is responsible and accountable for individual nursing practice and determines the appropriate delegation of tasks consistent with the nurse's obligation to provide optimum patient care, right? We know all of this, but just be familiar with it. And no, you don't have to know it to recite it in this form by any means, because again, the second nature, but if you're seeing a question, you should be able to identify what falls into the nursing code of ethics one through nine. So I'm saying it so that you can just put ingrained into your muscle memory, right into your mind so that you are familiar, right? So again, another time, number four, the nurse is responsible and accountable for individual nursing practice and determines the appropriate delegation of tasks consistent with the nurse's obligation to provide optimum patient care. So just simply saying that you're responsible and accountable for all the individual needs to provide optimal patient care, right? So I'm gonna read to you one more time. Number four, the nurse is responsible and accountable for individual nursing practice and determines the appropriate delegation of tasks consistent with the nurse's obligation to provide optimum patient care. Number five, the nurse has to remain responsible for their own competence and growth. Number five, the nurse has to remain responsible for their own competence and growth. Number five, the nurse has to remain responsible for their own competence and growth. Number six, the nurse participates in the advancement of healthcare. Number six, the nurse participates in the advancement of healthcare. Number six, the nurse participates in the advancement of healthcare. Seven, the nurse participates in the advancement of the profession. Sounds like the same thing, but hey, it's a part of the nine. Number seven, the nurse participates in the advancement of the profession. And one more time, number seven, the nurse participates in the advancement of the profession. Number eight, the nurse collaborates to support public health. Number eight, the nurse collaborates to support public health. Number eight, the nurse collaborates to support public health. And then lastly, number nine, the nurse holds responsibilities in professional organizations. Number nine, the nurse holds responsibilities in professional organizations. Number nine, the nurse holds responsibilities in professional organizations. You know this, we know this. Just be familiar of which ones fall in that one through nine, okay? All right, all the terms, all the terms. So I'm just gonna hit, hit the words with what they um, associate with, and then we're gonna just move through those quickly, okay? All right, so beneficence is what? Y'all tell me, y'all should know these, because that's from our previous undergrad stuff, right? But beneficence to do, to do good. Beneficence to do good. Beneficence to do good. Non-maleficence to do no harm. Non-maleficence to do no harm. Non-maleficence is to do no harm. And again, the video from earlier this week, I kind of go into that to kind of help you how to um, think of those. Because, you know, like non-maleficence, no malice, so we're not trying to do any harm. But just think of those. But take a look back at that video if you need help a little bit more. Justice is fair. Justice, fair, justice, fair. Confidentiality, you know, the legal right, an ethical principle of providers in healthcare to keep information private, right? Confidentiality. It's that ethical principle and legal right to keep things private, right? Confidentiality is that ethical principle and legal right to keep things private. Dignity, treating people with respect. Dignity, 
treating people with respect, dignity, treating people with respect, autonomy, independence, free will, autonomy, independence, free will, autonomy, independence, free will, accountability, being responsible for one's actions. Accountability, being responsible for one's actions. Accountability, being responsible for one's actions. Veracity, truth. Veracity, truth. Veracity, truth. Malpractice, illegal negligence provided by a health care provider. Malpractice, illegal or negligence actions provided by a healthcare provider. Malpractice, illegal, negligent actions provided by a healthcare provider. Informed consent. Consent, permission from the patient to proceed with the procedure after being provided the risk and benefits. Informed consent. Permission granted to proceed with a procedure after being provided the details of risk and benefits. Informed consents. Permission granted after receiving information on the risk and benefits. All right. And then advanced directives. Now, I don't want this to get confusing. So the advanced directive, living wheels, and dur durable power of attorneys are types of advanced directives, right? So I'm just going to hit what those are. So the living will is that written document that can contain medical treatment and other responsibilities in the event that they are not able to make the, those decisions on their own. A living will is a written document for medical treatment or other Circumstances in the event that they're not able to make those decisions on their own. The living will is the actual written document that has the details of the patient's wishes for like medical treatment and other circumstances and who are held responsible in the event that the patient can't do it themselves, right? And then a durable power of attorney is the person who is assigned to manage the patients do this if they are unable to do so themselves. So you know with a healthcare power of attorney that is specifically to healthcare, but a durable power of attorney is over whatever is written for them to be responsible for in the event the patient is unable to do so themselves. And one more time, the durable power of attorney is the person assigned to manage the listed duties in the event that the patient is unable to do so themselves. All right, y'all take a moment, pause the video, and say all of that three times, okay? Pause it, go through the list, and say to yourself, beneficence, to do good, beneficence, to do good. Do that, try it out. All right, so here, again, I discussed this in the video when I was going over the lesson, but i like y'all to know, because you know we're doing a series of all the non-clinical content for this month. So next week, I will be covering um, HIPAA, CMS, everything, you know, the Medicaid, the Medicaid, all the things, and billing, okay? So be prepared to go over all of those policies, insurance things, you know, claims base versus occurrence base, all of those things. So that's what we'll be covering next week. But as always, thanks for watching and make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and share with someone who may find this helpful as well. But y'all know what to do. Be sure y'all meet me back here. Bye, y'all.